Praise be to Allah, the cherisher and sustainer of the worlds. I am Dr. Ramsha Mushta Khan, and today I have the opportunity to present on the topic Prayers for the Health Protection of Workers, Prevention of Occupational Diseases under the kind supervision of Professor Dr. Saira Afsar. Quote of the day If you can be anything, be real. Content outline, introduction of occupational health, health promotion of workers, measures for the health protection of workers, medical and engineering measures for the prevention of occupational diseases, legislation for workers, recent updates and multiple choice questions. Learning objective, by the end of this presentation, participants will be able to describe occupational health, how health promotion can be achieved in workers, various medical and engineering measures to prevent occupational diseases, and labor rules for workers. Occupational health, the modern definition of occupational health by uh, International Labor Organization and World Health Organization is the promotion and maintenance of the highest degree of physical, mental, and social well-being of workers in all occupations, total health of all at work. The employee well-being is measured by the three or uh, four determinants. Number one is physical, number two, mental, number three, financial, and number four is social. The physical determinant is the physical body ensuring a person has the freedom, opportunities, and resources needed to sustainably maintain bodily health. The mental determinant is the psychological ability to cope with information, emotions, desires, and stressors in a healthy and balanced way, essential for day-to-day -day living and functioning. Financial domain includes the state of a person's finances, ensuring that a person feels capable to handle their financial situations and behaviors, the ability to live productively without the weight of financial stress, and social determinant includes the state of personal and professional relationships, including personal and community engagement, the capability for genuine, authentic, and mutually affirming interactions with others. International Labor Organization Standards and Policies, all ILO standards on uh, occupational safety and health and ILO's policy in occupational health reflect the following three core, core values. Number one, work should take place in a safe and healthy working environment. Conditions of work should be consistent with workers' well-being and human dignity. And number three, work should offer real possibilities for personal achievement, self-fulfillment, and service to society. Health promotion. Scientific evidence shows that in the long term, work-related stress can contribute to musculoskeletal disorders, hypertension, and cardiovascular diseases. It may also alter immune functions, which in turn can facilitate the development of cancer. More widely, it can lead indirectly to problems in and outside the workplace, such as violence, the abuse of drugs and alcohol, strained family relationships, depression, physical and mental health disorders, and even suicide. However, the early detection and appropriate treatment of incipient occupational and non-communicable diseases will reduce mortality and lower the frequency and extent of residual disability from many of such diseases. The prevention of occupational accidents and diseases, the promotion of a healthy working life, and the building of a preventive culture is a shared responsibility of governments, employers, and workers, health professionals, and society as a whole. Health promotion in the workplace contributes to the, uh, the improvement of work organization and the working environment, social dialogue, and the active participation of social partners in the improvement of working conditions at the workplace level, the promotion of health among all workers, their families, and their communities, the encouragement of personal development and well-being by enabling workers to reach a higher level of self-determination concerning their health and its improvement. Health promotion benefits both workers and employers by improving workplace productivity and performance, the long-term well-being of workers and their families, and reducing pressure on health, welfare, and social security systems. When health promotion at the workplace is effective, it complements occupational safety and health measures to prevent accidents and diseases and to, and to protect workers' health. Action is taken based on an analysis of the health requirements and needs of an enterprise. Employers, workers, and their representatives are involved. Activities in this area seek to improve the quality of working conditions and work organizations. 
focusing on healthy behaviors. ILO WHO recommendations on occupational health, the measures uh, for the general health protection of workers was the, was the subject of discussion by an ILO WHO committee on occupational health in 1953. The committee recommended the following measures, which includes number one, nutrition, number two, communicable disease control, number three, environmental sanitation, number four, mental health, number five, measures for women and children, number six, health education, and number seven, family planning. Uh, the nutrition of workers must be a concern of occupational health programs. All workers should be nourished adequately, including any special demands. To achieve this, workers should be paid handsome pay, uh, package to purchase food for himself and his family. Workers should be educated about the composition of a balanced diet. Facility of a canteen at workplace when uh, workers exceed certain numbers and provision of subsidy on food. A separate and good sanitary conditions dining room for meals is a good practice. Facility for storing food in uncontaminated conditions should be provided. Communicable disease control. Uh, the industry provides an excellent opportunity for early diagnosis, treatment, prevention, and rehabilitation. It is a general objective everywhere to detect cases of communicable disease and to render them non-infectious to others by treatment or removal uh, from the working environment or both. There should be an adequate immunization program against preventable communicable diseases. Anthrax, endulent fever, and Q fever are examples of communicable diseases which may be of occupational origin. Their control calls for special sanitary measures in the uh, handling of working materials and substances. Environmental sanitation. Within the industrial establishment, the following needs attention for the prevention of the spread of communicable diseases by water, food, and other, or other means. Water supply, a, su a sufficient supply of wholesome water uh, is required. Water is one of the basic requirements all industrial establishments. The common blast umbrella uh, for drinking water should be abandoned as it spreads infection. Installation of drinking water fountains at convenient points should be encouraged. Food, if food is sold, its uh, sanitary preparation, storage, and handling are essential. Education of food handlers and other measures may be necessary to prevent outbreaks of gastrointestinal disease. Toilet, it is recommended that there should be at least one sanitary convenience for every 25 employees, males and females separate, uh, for the first 100 employees and thereafter one for every 50. General plant cleanliness, the walls, ceilings, and passages should be painted with water washable paint and repainted at least once in three years and washed at least once in every six months. The dust which settles down on the floor and machinery should be promptly removed. Sufficient space, uh, floor space and cubic space are essential to prevent not only respiratory infections but also to ensure a comfortable working environment. The recommended standard is a minimum of, minimum, minimum of 500 cubic feet of space for every worker. Lightning, the results of pure, uh, poor industrial illumination are workers' eye fatigue, increased accidents, decreased production, and more rejections of finished projects. Furthermore, defective illumination over a long period of time may result in permanent impairment of vision. There should be sufficient and suitable lightning, natural or artificial or both, in every part of a factory where workers are working or passing through. Uh, number seven includes ventilation and temperature. Eight, uh, protection against hazards. And nine, housing. Uh, number four is mental health. The goals of mental health in industry are to promote the health and happiness of the workers, to detect signs of emotional stress and strain, and to secure relief of stress and strain where possible, the treatment of employees suffering from mental illness, and rehabilitation of those who become ill. Mental health is more than the absence of mental illness. Mental health aid, aids in coping with stress. Workplace wellness must be a top priority and you cannot have health without mental health. Human performance and mental health go hand in hand. Measures for women and children. Women workers require special protection because the developing embryo may be more susceptible to noxious agents than the exposed mother. For example, in the case of methyl mercury poisoning, females may be less suited for some work tasks than men. The infant mortality is higher amongst children of work, a woman employed in, in industrial work. Following provisions should be uh, provided to the woman, a paid maternity leave of 12 weeks, provision of free antenatal, natal, and postnatal checkups, prohibition of work at night, and prohibition of work in dangerous occupations like mining. Oh. The minimum age for employment in Pakistan in various provinces is Punjab 15 years, uh, Sindh 14 years, KPK 14 years, Balochistan 14 years. The minimum age for hazardous work in Balochistan is still 14 years, where it is raised to 18 years in the rest of the provinces. 
Health education in the industrial setting should be envisaged at all levels, the management, the supervisory staff, the worker, the union trade leaders, and the community. The content varies from matters of personal hygiene and protection to participation of the workers in the planning and operation of the total health service program in the industry. Family planning is now recognized a decisive factor for the quality of life, and this applies to, this applies to industrial workers also. The workers must adopt the small family norm. Prevention of occupational diseases is uh, covered by medical measures, engineering measures, and legislation. The medical measures include pre placement examination, periodic examination, medical and healthcare services, notification, supervision of working environment, maintenance and analysis of records, health education, and counseling. Pre placement examination the purpose of pre placement examination is to place the right man in the right job so that the worker can perform his duties efficiently without detriment to his health. It is done at the time of employment and includes the worker's medical, family, occupational, and social history. A thorough physical examination and a battery of biological and radiological examinations, for example, chest X-ray, electrocardiogram, vision testing, urine and blood examination, and special tests for endemic diseases. A fresh recruit may either be rejected or given a job suited to his physical and mental abilities. The following is a list of some occupations in which it is risky to employ men suffering from certain diseases. Uh, for example, uh, uh, lead, uh, dye, solvents, silica, radium, and x-rays. Uh, periodic examination. Many diseases of occupational origin requirement requires months or even years for their development. Their slow development very often leads to their non-recognition in early stages, and this is harmful for the worker. This is the reason why a periodical medical checkup of workers is very necessary when they handle toxic or poisonous substances. Particular care should be given to workers returning from medical leave to reassess the nature and degree of any disability and to assess suitability or otherwise of returning the to the same job. Medical and healthcare services. The medical care of occupational diseases is a basic function of an occupational health service. Social Security Institution in Pakistan provides medical care not only for the worker but also to his family. Within the factory, first aid services should be made available. Properly applied first aid can reduce suffering and disability and hasten recovery. Notification. The main purpose of notification in industry is to initiate measures for prevention and protection and ensuring their effective application, to investigate the working conditions and other circumstances which have caused or suspected to have caused the occupational disease. Supervision of working environment. The physician should pay frequent visits to the factory in order to acquaint himself with the various aspects of the working environment such as temperature, lightning, ventilation, humidity, noise, cubic space, air pollution, and sanitation, which have an important bearing on the health and well-being of the workers. He should be acquainted with the raw materials, processes, and products manufactured. For studies of this kind, the physicians should enlist the cooperation of safety engineers, industrial hygienists, and psychologists. Maintenance and analysis of records. The worker's health record and occupational dis disability record must be maintained. Their uh, compilation and review should enable the service to watch over the health of the workers to assess the hazards inherent in certain types of work and to devise or improve preventive measures. Health education and counseling. Ideally, health education should start before the worker enters the factory. All the risks involved in the industry in which he is employed and the measures to be taken for personal protection should be explained to him. The correct use of protective devices such as uh, masks and gloves should also be explained. Simple rules of hygiene, hand washing, part, uh, pairing the nails. Bodily cleanliness and cleanliness of clothes should be impressed upon him. He should be frequently reminded about the dangers in industry through the media of health education, such as charts, charts posters, and handbills. Engineering measures include design of building, good housekeeping, general ventilation, mechanization, substitution, uh, dust control, enclosure, isolation, and protective devices. Uh, number one is design of the building, a type of floor, walls, height, uh, ceiling, floor, doors, and windows. Cubic space are all matters. Uh, which should receive and, uh, and attention in the original plan of the building, which is put up by the industrial architect. Uh, how, good housekeeping, it covers general cleanliness, ventilation, lightning, uh, washing, food arrangements, and uh, general maintenance. Good housekeeping is a fundamental requirement for the control or elimination of occupational hazards. To prevent accidents, the right thing should be in the right place. General ventilation, it has been recommended that in every room of a factory, ventilation, ventilating openings shall be provided in the proportion of five square feet for each worker employed in such room. 
openings shall be uh, such as to admit a continued supply of uh, fresh air in rooms where dust is generated there should be an efficient exhaust ventilation system good general ventilation decreases the airborne hazards to the workers especially hazards from dust and gases mechanization the plant should be mechanized to the fullest possible extent to reduce the hazard of contact with harmful substances dermatitis can be preventive prevented if hand mixing is replaced by mechan mechanical devices acids can be conveyed from one place to another through pipes substitution of white phosphorus by phosphorus sesquil uh, sulfide in, uh, in the match industry which resulted in the elimination of necrosis of jaw the fossy jaw zinc or iron paints can be used in planes in place of harmful lead paints Dust control dust can be controlled at the point of origin by water sprays, for example, wet drilling of rock. Inclusion of a little moisture in the materials uh, will make the processes of grinding, sieving, and mixing comparatively dust-free. Enclosure, enclosing the harmful materials and processes will prevent the escape of dust and fumes into the factory atmosphere. Grinding machinery can be completely enclosed. Such enclosed units are generally combined with exhaust ventilation. Isolation, it is uh, necessary to isolate the offensive process in a separate building so that workers not directly connected with the operation are safe from exposure. And protective devices, protective devices comprise respirators, earplugs, earmuffs, helmets, safety shoes, aprons, gloves, gum boots, barriers, barrier creams, screens, and goggles. The workers should be instructed in the correct use of protective devices. Legislation. Legis a society has an obligation to protect the health of the worker engaged in diverse occupation. It has grown out of realization that the worker is more important than the machine which he operates. The worker cannot be permitted to endanger, endanger his life limb in an occupation while the uh, employer makes a fortune. Uh, factory laws, therefore, have been framed in every country to govern the conditions in industry and to safeguard the health and welfare of the worker. Laws of occupational health in Pakistan. There is no independent legislation on occupational safety and health issues in Pakistan. The main law which governs these issues is the Factories Act 1934. All the provinces under this act have devised factories rules. Khabar Pakhtunkha and Sindh have enacted the factory legislation in 2013 and 2016 respectively. The Directorate of Labor Welfare uh, in Pakistan. It, uh, the current, the most recent is the West Pakistan Camps Rule in 1960. The uh, Directorate General of Labor Welfare Punjab, it is a focal agency for the implementation of labor laws in the province and has a wide range of functions and responsibilities uh, that are, number one, maintenance of industrial peace and harmony in the province of Punjab, settlement of industrial disputes through the process of conciliation, arbitration, and ad 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 adjudication. Number three, coordination with district labor and human resource boards, dissemination of labor market information and implementation of government policies in this regard. And number four, adjudication of claims of compensation of cases of non-payment of wages. Number five, conducting of referendums for determination of collective bargaining agents and supervision of election proceedings of trade unions and federations. Number six, audit and scrutiny of the annual returns funds of trade unions and federations. Number seven, enforcement of uh, labor welfare laws on factories, transport, uh, railway shops, commercial and industrial establishments. Number eight, implementation of government policies and programs for the gradual elimination of child labor. Number nine, coordination of government efforts to combating the issue of child labor and uh, bonded lab uh, labor. Uh, number 10, registration and deregistration of factories. Number 11, enforcement of weights and major laws on factories, shops. Uh, training in various disciplines of industrial relations, administration, and financial management to the departmental functionaries. Um, provision of training information and advisory services to the industry. Uh, and distribution of managed grants, talent scholarships, funeral grants, management, and distribution of educational scholarships. Allotments of plots and estate management of labor colonies. Promotion of employment opportunities. Collection and dissemination of labor market information. Punjab Employee Social Security Institute, uh, PESI is an autonomous body under the administrative control of Labor and Human Resource Department under the uh, Punjab Government Rules of Business, uh, established through the Provincial Employees uh, Social Security Ordinance 1965. Uh, benefits provided by the Punjab Social Security include medical facilities, uh, cash benefits, uh, and the Labor Day is celebrated on 1st May, which is an annual holiday to celebrate the achievements of workers. Now it's time for the recent updates. 
uh, impact of the employee performance uh, study of NASCO group. Findings from the study showed that the health protection benefits have a positive and significant impact on employee performance in NASCO group. It showed that more the more health protection benefits are provided for the employees of NASCO group, the more they work hard at their jobs and their productivity increases. Retirement benefits have a positive and significant influence on employee performance. And lastly, findings from the study revealed that recognition had a significant impact on employee performance. It will help them create a sense of loyalty and encourage their productivity in the company. Overwork uh, related disorders uh, such as cerebrovascular dis diseases and mental disorders due to overwork are a major occupational and public health issue worldwide, especially in East uh, Asian countries. This report discusses the recent trend of overwork related disorders in Japan from the perspective of workers' compensated occupational diseases, as well as the development of a national policy for preventive measures against overwork related disorders in Japan. Recently, the number of claimed and compensated cases of occupational mental disorders has increased substantially, particularly among young workers as compared to those of occupational. In response to these situations and action from society, the Japanese uh, government passed the Act on Promotion of Preventive Measures Against Karoshi and Other Overwork-Related Health Disorders to develop a national initiative towards the prevention of overwork-related disorders. Now it's time for the MCQs. Number one. A 28-year-old man from a low-income uh, uh, family recently applied for a job at a sandblasting factory. During the pre-placement examination, he is found to be having pulmonary tuberculosis and infectious lung disease. What should be the next plan regarding his employment? A. Rejected and advised to work in another sandblasting industry. B. Rejected and advised to pursue any other job in any other kind of industry. C. Recruited and advised to get medical treatment while working. Uh, D. Recruited at a lower wage since his illness may impact his work performance. And E. Recruited with swift, uh, strict safety protocols to prevent transmission of tuberculosis. B. B. The answer is B. A 20, uh, 40 years old uh, worker at a cement factory is responsible for loading cement bags onto trucks. One day while performing his, uh, this physically demanding task, he experienced severe back pain. After undergoing medical investigations, the physician diagnosed him with a slip disc and advised him to take two weeks of medical leave for recovery. Once he returns from his medical leave, what, be the, what would be the recommended course of action? Uh, a. Allow him to resume his previous work immediately without any further evaluation. B. Conduct a medical examination and make a decision based on the findings. C. Declare him unfit for any type of work due to his back condition. D. Consider him fit for any type of work regardless of the physical demands. And E. Assign him to light duty tasks within the factory until his condition improves. B. E. E. The answer is B. The International Labour Organization and the World Health Organization have jointly de defined the concept of occupational health, which encompasses various aspects of a worker's well-being. Which of the following aspects is not included in the ILO WHO definition of occupational health? A. Physical well-being, B. Mental well-being, C. Social well-being, D. Economic well-being, and E. Environmental well-being. B. The answer is D. E. D. A new cotton factory is being planned for construction in a town. The factory is expected to employ 80 laborers. According to the Occupational Health and Safety Regulations, the number of toilets to be provided in the factory premises must be A, 3 toilets, B, 5 toilets, C, 7 toilets, D, 9 toilets, and E, 11 toilets. B? The answer, B. Is, the answer is C. Occupational health and safety measures encompass various medical and engineering controls aimed at protecting workers. Which of the following medical and engineering measures would be of no use for the health protection and prevention of occupational diseases in workers? A. Substituting hazardous substances with, with less uh, toxic alternatives. B. Using corrosion-resistant materials like plastic pipes for transporting acids. C. Ensuring adequate ventilation systems in the plant. D. Implementing dry-cutting materials for processing like processing materials like marble and E, providing personal protective equipment to workers. E? The answer e? is D. A new mobile phone assembly unit is being planned for construction. Which of the following measures would be of no benefit to the efficient and productive performance of workers in a new mobile assembly unit? A, provision retirement benefits or pension plans. B, ensuring adequate lighting in the work areas. C, allocating a minimum working space of 50 cubic feet per worker. D, establishing an on-site canteen or cafeteria. And E, maintaining comfortable temperature and humidity levels. 
The answer is A. A textile factory is in the process of recruiting 500 new workers. Which of the following considerations should the factory owner keep in mind while recruiting new workers? A. Assigning equal numbers of male and female staff for uh, night shifts. B. Ensuring all factory employees are 12 years of age or older. C. Providing a facility of 10 weeks of paid maternity leave for female workers. D. Setting a minimum wage of 22,000 per month for all workers. And E. Conducting pre-employment medical examinations to assess fitness for work. E. The odds. <laughs> The answer is C. A firm employing 1,500 workers has hired a physician to conduct periodic medical examinations for its workforce. Which of the following statements is correct regarding the need for periodic medical examinations in this firm? A. Periodic examinations are unnecessary since workers undergo uh, pre-employment uh, medical evaluations. Workers returning for medical leave do not require periodic examinations. Periodic examinations are compulsory as some occupational diseases may present late or take months or years to develop. Periodic examinations should be conducted at least once every two years. Periodic examinations are only required for workers in high-risk job roles. C? Yes, the answer is C. In the workplace, an engineering approach is adopted to prevent accidents by taking into account the physical and mental limitations of workers. Which of the following, uh, which of the following actions aligns with the engineering approach to accident prevention by considering workers' physical and mental limitations? A. Imposing an excessive number of safety rules and regulations. B. Prohibiting the installation or use of safety devices. C. Providing first aid treatment in case of injuries. D. Continuously evaluating and addressing addressing how workers are likely to react in different situations. And E. Conducting periodic safety inspections and addressing identified hazards. D. Yes, the answer is D. In a workplace setting, it is crucial to implement preventive measures to control the spread of communicable diseases among employees. Which of the following preventive measures would be of no use in controlling the spread of communicable diseases in the workplace? A. Providing a common gas drumler for uh, drinking water, offering a vaccination programs for preventable communicable diseases, maintaining a dust-free, pest-free and clean work environment, having a shared dining room for employees to have lunch and promoting good personal hygiene, hygiene practices such as hand washing. A? Yes, the answer is A. This is the key of the MCQs. And this is the link of our YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe and thank you very much.